since armies became professional in mindset, if not pay. A method of the carriage of arms was an important aspect of the use of them. It gave a common foundation at the lowest level from which discipline and, more importantly, battlefield effectiveness could be developed. By the mid-19th century, these series of drills had become known as the manual exercise, and a series of texts were drawn up periodically to explain and demonstrate how to execute the various aspects of it. Exemplary of the manual exercise at the time of the Crimean War, the Indian Mutiny, and on into the 1860s, is the 1861 version as laid out in the field exercise and evolutions of infantry of that same year. These movements did not have anything to do with the loading and firing of the weapons, but rather details on how to carry it according to the requirements of the battlefield or other garrison-based duties. While the firing drills, known as the platoon exercise, have largely been replaced in modern times by much more dynamic-based movements, the manual exercise, albeit in highly modified form, has survived to the present day. Rifle drill remains a staple of recruit training and ceremonial activities throughout the Commonwealth. These movements were practiced and used daily, at a time when tactics and drill were synonymous. These movements had evolved over a great number of years, and rather than being newly invented, early versions can be traced back to the time of the English Civil War and the time of Marlborough. It's important to realize, though, that as warfare changed, so did weaponry, and as new weapons were introduced, newer and often simplified movements were instituted to accommodate different characteristics. Typically, they were evolutions of earlier movements, some of which were from the time of the earliest use of massed firearms. The manual exercise detailed ways to carry and hold the weapon while standing still, while marching, standing guard, saluting, and maneuvering. This video will demonstrate these many movements as were used by British and Empire armies of the mid-Victorian era. It's important to realize that the manual exercise was not a vehicle of ceremony, as rifle drill has become today, although it certainly was used in such circumstances. Rather, it was a system to be used on the battlefield, and accordingly was generally efficient and workmanlike. You will at once notice that there is no foot stamping, a feature of later 20th century drill, and as mentioned before, movements were completed without pomp or flourish. The manual was not a prescribed routine, but was taught in a logical sequence. That said, there was a review exercise for use at reviews and inspections to gauge efficiency and ability. Troops were taught what was known as a squad drill first, individually and in small groups, standing at attention, turning and marching, provided the necessary foundation for further movements. Only once they were proficient at these movements without arms where they issued weapons. Though learnt and practiced by numbers, when the parts of the movements were combined, a pause equal to one beat of slow time, which at the time was 75 paces per minute, was observed. This roughly equates to the standard pause of 2-3, familiar to a more modern generation. Interestingly, the use of the count familiar to modern soldiers as 1-2-3-1 one, does not figure anywhere in these mid-Victorian texts. Perhaps of interest to more detailed-oriented viewers, the pauses are not completely intuitive between movements. There are many movements whose parts are broken into distinct entities, while others the parts are run together. The first part of the exercise, taught as mentioned before by numbers, was how to fall in on parade with your weapon. This was done at the shoulder. The position of shoulder arms was an important one, as many subsequent movements were executed from this position. The man stood at the position of attention. His heels were together, toes apart at approximately 45 degrees. His legs were straight and his body was held erect. The weapon was held under the butt plate, with the thumb hooked around the heel of the butt. The barrel was oriented to the front, and the weapon was held perpendicular to the ground. The right arm was straight at the side. The hand, interestingly, was held flat to the body when parading without intervals, but when parading with intervals, the back of the hand faced the front. The shoulders were back, and the head and eyes straight to the front. It was from this position, then, that the subsequent movements of the manual exercise were taught. The secure arms was a relic of an earlier age, when flintlock weapons needed to be protected from the elements. This was done by holding the lock under the arm. 
Secure! Arms! Two! Three! From the secure, troops could also stand at ease. Stand at... Ice! In the first part of the movement, the left hand turned the weapon so that the lock faced the front, and the right hand came across the body and gripped the small of the butt. In the second part, the right hand continued to twist the weapon so that the barrel faced the rear. The left hand quit the butt and gripped the rifle just below the lower band. In the third part, the left hand rotated the weapon down in front of the body, with the butt under the arm and the barrel pointed slightly down and to the right. The right hand moved to the position of attention. To stand at ease, the right hand came across and gripped the weapon just in front of the lower band. The left hand moved under the butt and was placed on the right forearm. Simultaneous to this, the right foot was drawn back to the position of stand at ease. The shoulder arms from the secure. Attention! Shut! Shoulder! Arms! Two! Three! To come back to the position of attention, the right foot was drawn back up in line with the left. Simultaneous to this, the weapon was regripped in the position of secure arms. In the first part of shoulder arms, the weapon was rotated back up perpendicular to the ground, and the right hand regripped the small of the butt. In the second part, the right hand twisted the weapon so that the lock faced the front, and the left hand regripped the butt plate with the thumb at the heel. In the third part, the left hand continued to rotate the weapon back to the position of shoulder arms, and the right arm was cut away to the position of attention. When standing still for any short period of time, the weapon could be brought to the order. Order! Arms! Two! Three! In the first part, the right hand came across the body and gripped the weapon just below the middle band. In the second part, the weapon was rotated down to the right side of the body and placed gently on the ground. And in the third part, the right hand switched its grip with the thumb in front of the weapon held at the right side. Squad will fix bayonets! Fix! Bayonets! On the word of command fix, the right hand regripped the weapon with the thumb behind. Simultaneous to this, the left hand moved to a position with the thumb behind the bayonet socket. The left elbow was kept as close to the body as possible. On the word of command bayonets, the weapon was pushed out slightly from the body. Simultaneous to this, the left hand drew the bayonet out of the scabbard, placed it on the muzzle, and locked the ring. As this was completed, the weapon was brought back to the position of the order. You will at once notice that there is no pause between any of the movements that are executed on the word of command, bayonets. Here's a demonstration of the detail of how the bayonet is physically fixed to the muzzle of the weapon. The shoulder arms from the order. Shoulder! Arms! Two! On the word of command, shoulder, the right hand regripped the weapon with the thumb behind. On the word of command, arms, the right hand raised the rifle up, bending at the elbow, keeping the rifle close to the body. In the second part, the right hand moved the weapon to the position of shoulder arms. The left hand gripped the butt plate, and immediately the right hand returned to the position of attention. The position of present arms was used as a form of salute. The saluting of senior officers, colors, and armed parties were instances where this movement was used. Present! Arms! Two! Three! In the first part, the rifle was gripped with both hands as per the first motion of the secure. The left hand rotated the lock forward and the right hand gripped the small of the butt. In the second part, the right hand brought the weapon up with the lock facing the front. 
Simultaneous to this, the left hand was moved to a position with the wrist touching the trigger guard and the hand flat against the bottom of the sling. The tips of the left hand were in line with the face. In the third part, the weapon was brought down perpendicular to the body. It remained on the center line and it was twisted so that the trigger guard faced the front. Simultaneous to this, the right foot was drawn back so that the right instep touched the left heel. Note the extension of the right arm and the left forearm being kept perpendicular to the ground. Note also the change in grip. The right hand is open, finger straight, and the left hand has assumed an all-around grip of the weapon with the thumb uppermost. The shoulder arms from the present. Shoulder! Arms! Two! In the first part, the weapon is rotated back to the left side with the trigger guard facing the rear. The left hand assumes a grip of the butt plate and the right hand assumes an all-around grip on the small of the butt. Simultaneous to this, the right foot is brought up back to the position of attention. In the third part, the right hand is drawn back down to the position of attention. The port arms from the shoulder. Port arms! Two! The first part of this movement was common to other movements, such as the secure and the present. The left hand twisted the weapon so the lock faced the front, and the right hand came across and gripped the small of the butt. In the second part, the weapon was brought down in front of the body, held at a 45 degree angle. The left hand quit the butt plate and gripped the rifle between the lock plate and the lower band. The charged bayonets was used so that the soldier was able to present the bayonet to the front. As a front rank, charge bayonets! On the word of command, bayonets, the body was twisted 45 degrees to the right, pivoting on the heels. Simultaneous to this, the weapon was brought down, presenting the bayonet to the front, with the barrel perpendicular to the ground and the arms straight so that the butt was near the right hip. Shoulder! Arms! Two! In the first part of this movement, the body was rotated back to the front and the rifle was brought up back to the shoulder arms position. The right hand remained on the small of the butt and the left hand gripped the butt plate. In the second part, the right hand was brought down to the position of attention. The advance arms from the shoulder. Advance! Arms! Two! Three! In the first part, the weapon was twisted in the left hand so that the lock faced the front and the right hand gripped the small of the butt. In the second part, the weapon was transitioned to the right side. The left hand changed its grip to one at the lower band, while the right hand changed its grip from an all-around grip at the small of the butt to one where the thumb and the forefinger gripped the trigger guard and the remainder of the fingers were curled underneath the lock hammer. In the third part, while maintaining the weapon perpendicular to the ground, the left hand was cut away to the position of attention. The order arms from the advance. Order! Arms! Two! Three! In the first part, the left hand came across and gripped the weapon between the upper and middle band. In the second, the left hand lowered the weapon through the right and placed the butt gently on the ground. And in the third, the left hand was cut away to the position of attention. Advance arms from the order. Advance! Arms! Two! On the word of command, advance, the right hand repositioned with the thumb behind the weapon. On the word of command, arms, with a flick of the wrist, the weapon was brought up to the right side and simultaneously caught with the left hand across the body and the right hand in the position of advance arms. In the second part, the left hand was cut away to the position of attention. The shoulder arms from the advance. Shoulder! Arms! Two! Three! 
in the first part, the weapon was thrown up approximately one inch and caught with the left hand across the body, with the right hand repositioning to the small of the butt. In the second part, the weapon was transitioned to the left side, the left hand gripped the butt plate, and the right hand maintained its grip on the small. In the third part, the right arm was cut away to the position of attention. This concludes part one of the manual exercise for the P-53 Enfield rifle musket. Part two will continue to demonstrate the individual movements of the manual exercise, show the review exercise, as well as demonstrate certain circumstances where these positions were used.